All right, today we're going to walk through how to do Photoshop Lesson 2, Classroom in a Book, and this is the CS6 version. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to grab the file that you'll need for the project, and it's located in Unit 5, the Exposure Unit. It says Lesson 2, Start File. So you're going to click on that file, and when it downloads to the bar here, you can click to open it. Here it is. And then we're going to make a copy of it. So make a copy and put it into the folder where you're saving your work. So you probably have a photography folder um, started already. Go ahead and put it inside there. Then we're going to close this out and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up Photoshop. So Photoshop is located um, for some of you on your desktop, but if you don't see it, you can open it by starting the um, Windows Explorer menu down here and just typing in P-H-O-T-O -O and it will pop up Photoshop. Photoshop looks like this, and so when you see this opening, you'll know you're in the right program. Alright, so now we're going to follow the directions here and start in Camera Raw. And this is probably the most tricky part of the lesson, so follow along closely. We're going to go to File. We're going to go to Open As, and then we're going to find that spot where we saved our work. So we, you've probably started a photo folder somewhere. Find the picture. Click on it one time. Just select it. Then down here where it says Open As, choose the one that says Camera Raw. Notice how it's the very longest bunch of uh, letters. Click Open. Once you've done that, you'll see, just like on page 51 in the textbook, we have the Camera Raw dialog box. Now, in order to make adjustments to this picture, we're going to be using the sliders and some of the tools here at the top. The first tool that we're going to use is the White Balance tool. The White Balance tool right up here will be used to select a part of the picture that should be white. And so the directions in the book say to try clicking on a cloud. You can see clicking on a cloud on the graffiti changes the picture and hopefully makes it look a little bit more accurate. Then they recommend clicking on the girl's shoe. We're looking for parts that should be white in the picture. Okay, now once you've done that, we're going to make some adjustments to the sliders over here. Now as you're making the adjustments, if you have a hard time following along, this is on page 52 in the book. We're going to adjust many of the sliders to change the way that the picture looks. The first slider we're going to change is the temperature slider. We'll change the temperature slider to negative 53. The next slider we'll change is tint. The, chin the tint will be changed to negative 54. <coughs> then we're going to change the exposure slider. We'll change the exposure slider to negative 0 0.50 and then Leaving recovery and fill light alone, we're going to change the black slider to 18. And then we'll change the contrast slider to plus 23. Now remember, you can slide these up or you can type in the box, whatever is more comfortable for you. We're going to change the clarity slider to plus 12. And we're going to change the vibrant slider to plus 25. then the saturation slider to plus five as well. Okay, now you can see we've made quite a few nice changes to the picture, but if you were following along over here, you probably didn't notice all those changes. So one way you can see how much progress you've made is up here at the top, you can click or unclick the preview box and you can see what a nice difference that has made to the picture. So this picture was probably shot with the wrong type of lighting selected in the camera. All right, we've made all the changes we need to in this camera raw dialog box, so we're going to click on the open image down at the bottom of the page. This opens the image in Photoshop. We're going to go through some steps now in order to fix the picture and correct it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten the picture out so you can see that it is crooked. We are going to use the um, crop tool, which is located over here on the toolbar and it is the fourth tool down. When you hold down the crop tool, you'll see that there's a variety of options. We want the regular crop tool. And as you can see, when the crop tool is selected, um, you'll have some options for the 
the top properties window as well. So um, if your your properties bar doesn't match mine, then make sure you change it because it can certainly make a difference for what kind of box you're seeing in the middle. Okay, so what we want to see here is we want to go to unconstrain. So if yours isn't the same, change it now. And we're going to type in um, right here in this box, we're going to type in 3.5 and this is 3.5 inches and then we're going to type in 2.5. Oh, and as you can see, we've got our, um, our boxes vertical instead of horizontal. So let's go ahead and use this rotation option right here to go ahead and change the value so that it matches what our picture looks like. Okay, now we're going to pull these in and we want to match the edges up with this new box with our picture. So now we're going to rotate it. So twist it around and then tighten it up again. We don't want to have any white borders left. We want it to just fill our picture. And once it fills the picture, all of the outside will be removed permanently by clicking the check mark right up here. So do that, please. Okay, perfect. Now we have cropped our picture. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the color in the little girl's hat. And so as you can see right now, she has a red hat on and we want to change her hat to green. Now you might want to get a better look at this since she's pretty far away. So in order to zoom in, you're going to do control plus. And when you control plus, you can zoom in nice and close. As you can see, I've moved in, but I'm not in the right spot of the picture anymore. So now I want to hold down the space bar, hold it down and then pull yourself around to the part you want to see again and I can even zoom in more. So get nice and close on that hat if you'd like to. Zooming in is control plus, zooming out is control minus. Okay, we're going to change the color of this hat. So we're going to be using um, a color changing brush. The color changing brush that we want to use is located right over here. It's called the color replacement tool. When you click on the color replacement tool, you need to select the color you want to change it to. So right down here are the foreground and background colors. You can also find them right over here. We're going to click on that black color. Depending on what color you have, you want to pick something that's in the green category. So something in here and make sure that you see it pop up here in this window. So my current color is black and I'm changing to green. Then click OK. Now, all you have to do with the color replacement brush is brush over the area that you want to fix. If you make a mistake at this point, all you need to do to fix it is do edit, step backward. You can also use the key command Alt Control Z or step backward. You can step backward 25 times so you can make 25 mistakes before you fix it. Okay, we have um, the hat painted so we're ready to move on to page 56. The next thing we're going to do is saturate the background and so saturation means to enhance the color to make it stronger or brighter and so um, to zoom out just like I did there control zero and it will fit it right into the um, the window so control zero zoom yourself out now we want to find the sponge tool the sponge tool is located right here you can see it's at the bottom of this extra group so you have to click on the group and then slide over to the sponge tool and we want to make sure that at the top menu bar here we have the word saturate selected okay and so in order to um, complete this step we're going to brush over the graffiti to make it even more vibrant. So go ahead and get your brush and kind of scrub along all the graffiti, making it brighter and brighter. And this is called saturation sponge. Okay. Once you've done that, we're going to actually do some repairing to this wall. You can see that it has some problems that we're going to fix. So we're going to use some of the repair brushes. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fix this area right here by the girl's face. And so we're going to use a, a tool called the clone stamp. The clone stamp is over here. Make sure you choose the top tool. And you can see that the brush that I have is um, kind of a medium size. If you want to change the size of your brush, you click up here on the toolbar and you can pull this around, getting a bigger brush or a much smaller brush. And so um, let's say on my picture I have 49 pixels. That seems like a pretty good size to start with if you're not sure. Okay, now to use this tool, what you need to do is you need to 
find some brick that's still in good shape. So you can see right over here in the corner, we have a nice selection of brick, which is undamaged. We're gonna go to our keyboard, press and hold the Alt key. Notice how the tool changes to a little tiny bullseye and I'm gonna click with my mouse on the brick. Click one time and then let go. Now I'm gonna go over here to this brick that I wanna fix and you can see how the brick from the, the good spot over here follows me along. And so now I can just paint with this good brick. And so what's happening is the program is sampling the brick from this side and it's bringing it over so I can paint with it and fix it. That's called the clone stamp. All right, so we've cloned some brick out. The next step that we want to do or the next tool we wanna try is called the spot healing brush. The spot healing brush looks like a little band-aid. So you're gonna find it right down here. We've got the spot healing brush and the regular healing brush. We're gonna start with the spot healing brush for the next fix. Okay, so the thing that we're gonna fix with the spot healing brush is this dark chunk up here. All we have to do is paint over it and Photoshop will automatically just try and match brick that um, is from around where the problem lied. So we just painted right over that. Okay, we're gonna try another tool now. We're going to make a selection so making a selection happens with the lasso tool. The lasso tool is the third tool down and you just want the regular one. You're going to make a circle around this weird crack right here. So select it the best you can. Once it's selected, we're going to go up to the fill and we're gonna choose con fill right here. And then we're going to choose content aware. So edit, fill, content, aware. So make sure you pick the one that says content aware and then click OK. And just like magic, it fixes that. Now we still have this selected. In order to um, deselect something, you can go to the word select, deselect, or you can click control D. You can also just click one time in another location. All right, the next thing we're going to do is apply an unsharpened mask. And so we're gonna go up to the word filter. We're going to go to sharpen and then unsharpen mask. And again, here we have some sliders so we can um, change the amount of the unsharpened mask. The directions in the book on page 61 tell us that we want to change the amount here to 70% in the percentage of amount. Uh, for the radius, we're going to choose 1.0. And for the threshold, we're going to pick zero. Okay, and if you wanna see what a difference that makes, you can click and unclick preview and notice how the picture does become more sharp. Then click okay. All right, the last thing we need to do is save and then we can submit this project on Moodle. So file, save the project as, and you might wanna save it as your name. Make sure you leave the format in JPEG. JPEG is preferable for all handing in of projects and then click Save. Again when this window pops up go ahead and just leave it on large file and click it OK. Once you have this project saved please go ahead and turn it in on Moodle.